Hey everybody, Ryan Jackson. Hope you're doing well. All right, this is our last video on Article 230. This is going to be covering 230.7, which is the requirement for the location of the service disconnect. Now, I kind of gave a little teaser at the end of the last video that this may or may not be a big deal depending on what you do and where you live. Um, if all you do is commercial or industrial, eh, probably not a big deal. If you do residential, well, depends on where you live. In my part of the country, I live in Salt Lake City, Utah. In my part of the country, we've been doing this for seriously like 60 years. This doesn't change anything for us. In some parts of the country, this is a big deal. So you might have already guessed, we're going to be talking about the emergency shutoff thing in 230.85. Well, there is no 230.85 anymore. So let's take a peek and figure out how this all worked out. All right, Article 230, Services. Code making panel 10 has purview over, to, over article 230, and let's see what they did here. 230.70, the service equipment for one and two family dwellings must now be outdoors, period. The service disconnect has to be outside. Some editorial revisions and clarifications were also made, and as a result of that change, the emergency disconnect requirement formerly found in 230.85 was deleted. So there is no 230.85 anymore. All right. 230.70 tells us that a way to disconnect the ungrounded service conductors from the building or structure must be provided. Yeah, of course. You supply electricity to a building, you need to be able to shut off the electricity. Uh, that's been in the code for, actually, it's, it predates the National Electrical Code. Uh, this, the first time I ever read that, the first document I read it in, was, uh, was dated 1885. So, yeah, you got to be able to shut things off, right? That's, that's pretty clear. For dwelling units. The service disconnect must be outdoors, and it must be readily access accessible, and it can be located either on the dwelling unit or within sight of the dwelling unit. All right. It cannot be in the dwelling unit. So, yeah, depending on where you live, right? Took this picture in uh, New Orleans. I was walking on the street and saw this, and of course I couldn't get my phone out of my pocket fast enough. I mean, what a what a wonderful piece of art here. So yeah, you got to be able to shut it off from outside. There's my service disconnect for my two-family dwelling. There's both of them, right? It has to be outside or within sight. So it, it's kind of funny the the exception says the service disconnect does not need to be within sight if an emergency disconnect that complies with 225.41 is installed. Okay, I know you read, you, you read the rule and you're like, okay, no more emergency disconnect. And then you read the exception and it's like, oh my God, I thought you said you didn't need an emergency disconnect, Ryan. Okay, look, here's the thing. The, the service disconnect, the service equipment, is the first place you can shut off the utility. That can be 500 feet from your house. I don't care. That can be a mile from your house. But you have to have either the service disconnect needs to be within sight. Or if it's not because it's farther, then you have to have an emergency shutoff within sight of the house. Okay? So the service disconnect has to be on the dwelling. Or if it's not physically mounted to the dwelling, it can be up to 50 feet away, right, and visible within sight. Or, if you don't want to do either of those two, you want to put your service disconnect out in Timbuktu, cool. You need an emergency shutoff that is what? Either on the dwelling or within 50 feet of the dwelling. So the bottom line here is this. You need to have a way to shut off the house, right, one and two family, from on the house or within sight of the house. Whether that's the service disconnect or a feeder disconnect, right, which is what Article 225 would cover. The bottom line here, though, is you don't get to have the service disconnect inside the house anymore. And you don't get to just put a sticker on the outside disconnect and say, hey, this looks like a disconnect, but it's really not a disconnect, and then put the service disconnect on the inside. I mean, that whole thing was just a mess right from the word go. So now it's much clearer. We also clarified here, and, and I mean... I guess it's a clarification. Remote control devices are not service disconnects, period. Yeah, well, they're not, right? If you have a shunt trip, right, the little in case of emergency break glass thing for the fire gods, that's not a service, that's not a service disconnect, right? 
that's a nice way to shut off the service disconnect, right? It trips the breaker from a remote location, but it doesn't de-energize the conductors supplying the service disconnect, and that's why it's not a service disconnect. They're, they're, they're not service disconnects. They don't remove the requirements of 230.70. So if you had the service disconnect inside your house, you don't get to put one of these on the outside and say, hey, use the shunt trip, <clears throat> that'll trip the breaker, and now the firefighters are happy. No, they're not, <laughs> because there's still unfused, unprotected conductors inside the house. These are not service disconnects. They never have been. They're making it very clear they're not service disconnects. All right, so there you go. Like I said, if you don't do residential, yeah, probably no big deal, right? If you live in the western part of the United States, like I do, yeah, probably not a big deal. If you live in certain parts of the eastern portion of the United States, well, maybe it's a big deal, maybe it's just a clarification. Because one of the problems with 230.85, ever since they put it in, is number one, what is a meter disconnect? Nobody can seem to agree on that. I mean, UL says it's one thing, Code making panel 10, different members say different things, different instructors around the country say different things, different manufacturers say different things. The reality is nobody really seems to know what a meter disconnect is. And then the option three that said, yeah, put a sticker on it and it, it doesn't have to be the service disconnect as long as you put a sticker on it that says it's not the service disconnect and then your service disconnects on the inside, although it's really not on the outside and, and none of it makes any sense when you look at the definitions, all that nonsense is gone. Put the service disconnect on the outside, everything's going to be fine. All right, there you go. We made it through Article 230. Next, we're going to get into Article 240, which covers overcurrent protection. I hope you'll join me, and I hope you'll be safe until then. Thanks, everybody.